here's a class A parked where cars usually park, taking up about nine spaces. When he could have parked over here, this is where the diagonal, they're very long parking spaces for trailers, class A's, fifth wheels. I wanna revisit this parking at night fear. People, it's number one fear, people parking at night. Where are they gonna park? I would agree. Sure seems that way from the comments we're getting. I know. Paul and I are driving through a residential neighborhood. Look at this. There's a wall on one side and trees and bushes on the other. This is perfect. There is a door right there, but it's so high, nobody would even think about us parking there for the night. Maybe we'd park a little bit further up because the door is pretty close. But this is perfect. We're just driving through a random neighborhood. Just trying to give you an idea. Now, there is a, no parking, but that's because for the university area, there's no parking Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. <clears throat> well, let's pull up in front of this house. No, I would not just pull up in front of this house. One reason is I could because there's no restrictions, but it would make them nervous all night long if we were parked there. This is another perfect area. Bushes on one side, and there's construction over there. Nobody would care if we were parked. Nobody would even think twice about it. And one of the reasons, because it's in the U of A area, there's a lot of out-of-state plates. This is another perfect place. Bushes, trees on one side, and a wall on another side. And it's in a residential area. It's not a busy street. Here's another one. Trees and walls. Easy. And we've got the parking signs, but that's only Monday through Friday till 5 p.m. After that, you can park. Don't stone park where they painted it red. But there are a lot of parking spaces residentially. I mean, even if they're just traveling, they're still scared. Oh, a rest stop. Oh, no. I've heard so many things about rest stops. We've, we've done fine parking in rest stops, right? Well, that's true. But I try to put myself in the place of a... Uh, I mean, I travel solo in my own van. You travel solo in your own minivan. But we're together. And it makes a difference. I think it provides a certain amount of comfort yeah. uh, to know that I've got your back and you've got mine. Um, so I, you know, I don't be too hard of the, <laughs> on some of the comments. Right, but, but I did travel solo and I stayed in well, in, in in rest stops. You just have true. to follow your instincts on that. But we're talking about a lot of urban living because I know a lot of you are going to do I, I know it as I know the sun's coming up a lot of you I'll bet a good 70% of you are going to do some BLM land but you're going to end up in a city a medium city yeah, yeah. and and you're going to live that way so um, we want to address this again and I think Paul has a lot to offer on this uh, conversation well thank you very much yeah <laughs> so it's and, not and I think that the the filming that you did as we drove around uh, this morning, uh, will will help. I, at least I hope so. To really show the kinds of places that we look for. Mm -hmm. and I know we're all not going to be in Tucson or or Phoenix or some other, uh, even maybe a, an Arizona town or city, but. The kinds of things we're talking about can be useful uh, right. no matter where you want to spend right. the night. So what we want to give you is actual examples so that this will bring your fear level even less. Hope so. Even yeah. down yeah. even more. But I did make you coffee, okay? Fresh coffee. There you go. You know what? I've got my own. All right. Well, cheers. Thank you very much. Coffee time. Well, we've got a lot to talk about. I do want to mention that <laughs> if you do get the knock, the if knock, you do, the knock, roll your window down a little bit. Do not say you're living in your van. Just don't say it. It's nobody's business but your own, right? 
Yeah, don't say that. What well, we talked about that, what were some suggestions that we would say, this is what you say. Even rehearse them because you know when you get that knock, if it's a policeman out there, um, but chances of that happen are so slim, but this is just in case of that 0.001% yeah. is what I had said. Well, just say, I'm traveling. I'm going to visit my family. I got tired and it looked like a, a safe place. Very good thing to say. Yeah, it just looked like a safe place. Because the, the uh, officers don't want you on the highway if you're nodding your head and can't, right. can't uh, right. stay awake. Right. I think they would appreciate the fact that you pulled over, actually. Right. And don't, you know, don't slur your, la your language like if you're really tired or whatever. And I think to say the least amount possible. I really do. Because um, they really do recommend you don't give a whole lot of information. You just don't start yapping your jaws <laughs> like, oh, yeah, and this and that. And because it's in the middle of the night or whatever. But I would just keep it as simple as possible. If they say, well, are you living in that van? Just say, I just had to pull over. I'm visit. I'm going to visit. If they even pursue it, just say, I'm really anxious to go visit my children. Just stick to your whatever. Stick to the script. Stick to the script. <laughs> Don't, because they will try. That's their job is to get you to talk so they can use something against you. And um, sorry, but it, I've, I've seen videos on this. And the policemen agree with what they say we want you to talk yeah. our goal is to get you to talk so we can see what the situation is you have to remember with everything you say you're providing more and more information right. and there could be just one yeah. little oh did you have a drink with dinner you know that's what right, <laughs> right. that's one of those things you have to be really careful of yeah. the point being you know we're making a big deal out of a police officer knocking on your window but like lee just said the chances oh, oh, are oh, one oh, percent. so slim, so slim. Now, who's usually, if anybody's going to knock on your window, who's going to do it? Who do you think? Well, it uh, could be a homeowner. It could be, you know, a concerned homeowner that has the guts to go out and knock on the window and say, what are you doing here? Um, well, it's hard for me to say because we've had so few. I mean, well, we who, had we had a, did in Las Vegas. Somebody had went up to you in Las Vegas. He was a security guard. Right. That's usually yeah. yeah. And he was very very nice about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you recall, as as Lee mentioned in yesterday's video, or today's yesterday's a couple of days ago, yeah. Doesn't matter. Stealth stealth but, camping. Yeah. But he was kind enough to say you can't park here because this casino me, behind me, even though it is a Cracker Barrel. They own the property and yeah. they set the rules. So you can't park here. Well, do you have any idea where I can park? Yeah, about three blocks yeah. down here and make a left turn. And there's a party store with a huge parking area off to the side. There's semis there. There's there's uh, <laughs> RVs there. And sh as it wound up, we were the only one there. And I thought, boy, I hope I've got the right place. But we did, evidently, because yeah. we spent a nice, quiet night and went on our way the next morning. And there was a McDonald's. We went and got coffee. Yeah. That, yeah. And, you know, that dollar, well, it was a dollar at the time. Yeah. Yeah. The senior well, discount. Yeah. But then the, another time that we got the knock, we were at the Grand Canyon. The Grand oh, Canyon yeah. is open 24 hours a day. 24-7. We were in a parking lot, I don't know, on the south rim somewhere, and a security guard, uh, we were the only two cars on the lot. He knocked on the window and said, sir, are you planning to spend the night here? And I said, well, yeah, we'd like to. He said, I'm afraid you can't. I said, isn't the park open? Well, yeah. Aren't there people in the hotel down the road st spending <laughs> the night here? Uh, yeah. I know. But, I mean, it was just the goofiest thing. And well, I, up, yeah. I did think, well, wow. I mean, what if we were going to go out at midnight and do some night filming of the Grand Canyon? <laughs> well, it's possible. Well, I mean, sure. Especially if there was a full moon providing some lighting and Right, so but forth. people have night vision. I mean, even our iPhones have yeah, night vision now. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So, it's quite possible. Right. Yeah. So, it... It that was weird. And otherwise, you know, there's people that get there 
this is summertime, of course, so the sun rises a little earlier. And there's people that get there at 3 and the 4 o'clock in the morning to hopefully get a good spot to get the sunrise. Right. Well, how were we differ? I, mean, I know. We were there at, what was this, 11, 12 o'clock, midnight, I guess? Yeah. But So, I mean, it was very strange. But again, he told me there is some BLM areas just south of the Grand Canyon, and you might want to try one of those. And it's what's called Jim, Long Jim's Loop? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. what was it? Long Jim's Loop. So... Even though so he, write that down, everybody. That's <laughs> near the Grand Canyon. <coughs> so even though he uh, <coughs> asked us to uh, move along, it didn't make any sense to either of us. But but at least he was nice enough to provide an alternative place right. to spend the night. Well, let's just do a little uh, one do a skit. Sure. Let me be the cop because I would. <laughs> can I be the cop? You want to be the tough guy. I'm eh? going to be the tough guy. <laughs> you be the tough guy, and then yeah. So you knock on got a knock there. Oh, you want me to be the cop? Oh, yeah, you be the cop. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's going to take me a while because I'm <laughs> going to look out first. I'm going to roll my window down just about this much and pull back on my uh, window shades and I go, hello? Well, miss, uh, just uh, checking, is everything okay in there? Oh, it's perfect in here, yes. Really? Uh, are you planning to spend the night here? I'm 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 tired and I'm going to go visit my children, okay. and it's um, I'm not too far from it, but I got a little tired. So, is there a problem, officer? Well, I'm noticing that you don't have a front passenger seat in your vehicle. Do you, do you live in your vehicle? Um, I'm just I'm gonna I'm I'm traveling and I'm gonna go visit my children. Okay. And I just got a little tired and it seemed like a safe place. I see. Is there is there a problem, officer? Uh, well, just kind of a wellness check, a security check to make sure you're all right. Oh, I'm fine. But you, do you, you spend all your days inside your vehicle? I'm going to visit my children, and I'm traveling, and I'm almost there. If I could just get some more rest, I'll be here <laughs> about three more hours, and I'll leave as soon as um, that's over. I get feel like I got enough rest to get back on the road. Okay, so um, you're planning to leave uh, first thing in the morning, then? Oh, exactly. Maybe even before the sun comes up. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So, well, be safe and drive carefully. Thank you very much, officer. Well, let's do it a different way. Now you say you can't park here. Okay, so is there a problem, officer? Well, the problem is that you're uh, in an area where you're not supposed to sleep in your car overnight. Oh, I didn't see any signs. I Well, I there checked. are no signs, but there are some regulations that mm. we have to follow. Well, okay. Um, do you have any suggestions where I could go? Well, as a matter of fact, I do have a couple. You could go about down by... Uh, the uh, Fry's grocery store, and uh, they don't mind if you park in your uh, oh, in okay. their lot overnight. So I really can't just stay here because I'm still tired. I can't let you do that because wow. we don't want to start something and have other people doing the same hmm. thing. Well, all right. I, you know, I'm not happy about it, but okay, I'll go. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you for your cooperation. Yes. Now let's do it to where you're Mr. Real Tough Guy, where you say. Get up. <laughs> well, officer, do I do I really have to move? Absolutely. Uh, we can't have people sleeping on the streets in their vehicles. Mm. Uh, we just can't do that. You mm. do have to move, and I'm afraid you have to do it right now. Do you know of any other place where I could go? No. Hit the highway. <laughs> you oh, said I should be a tough guy. But <laughs> no, that, because there I've heard. I remember Tyler told me one time where he says, get the and he wasn't nice about it. Okay. So, yeah, and then I would say, okay, I'm moving right now. Yeah. You don't want to argue with him. I mean, what, you, because you, you can't don't win want that him, argument. You're, you don't want him getting in your van, taking everything out. Yeah, yeah you yeah. don't want to do that. Because they, they'll find something. If he's that tough, they'll find something. Yeah. But like I said, this is like 1.00. Or no, point zero 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 one, no. that that would even happen. And the point is that yeah. you know this, it's very very unlikely, and that quite honestly yeah. is why Lee didn't address this uh, 
in more detail a couple days ago, but judging from the comments we're getting, yeah. it's something that is obviously on a lot of people's right. minds. Right, so. and seriously, I still go with it. It's just a matter of an attitude. You, you just need to have fun with it. I mean, the chance of an officer being on that, we had point A, point B on the C point where it hit the road, <laughs> that chances of that happening are so slim. Any, um, we did get one, um, I'm not going to read the whole letter, but I'll give you the gist of it. And it is so true. She said, you know, so many people, they, they feel like they're better and high and mighty and more elitist. Um, that are living in homes it's like ooh, I don't want that car out there but she made a good point in so many cases people don't even really own their homes do they the bank owns it really <laughs> how many people own their cars basically the bank owns the car and there's no reason to be mean to other people whether they're living in a vehicle or they're living on the streets just you know we're all human beings we're this far away from dying, really. Anything could happen to us. We're very fragile creatures. If we could just be kind to one another, seriously, and not think that, um, you know, one person's better than the other or one's more elevated than the other. And really? so, yeah. Excellent points that she brought up. Yeah, and, and exactly. Much appreciated. Yeah. So another question was stealth camping with a pet. Mm -hmm. There you go. Well, we we uh, here in Tucson, we I would say 80, 85 percent of the time we we're in a neighborhood, and if we are going to be uh, spending overnight in the neighborhood on the uh, side street, so to speak. I wait until the last possible moment when we are going to depart the park or wherever we are to uh, go to the neighborhood to spend the night. I let Abby out at the latest possible moment. So that could be, you know, with it getting dark around six or whatever, six o'clock, 6.30, Abby goes outdoors for the last time at the park where she can do her business. I do not let her out to do her business in the neighborhood. When we are parked, we don't even get up, get out of our vehicles, either one of us. Uh, we say our good nights uh, and then depart for the neighborhood where we're going to park. And that's it. First thing in the morning, when we get, when we leave the neighborhood and get to the park, then I let Abby out. And, uh, she does very well with it. You know, that could be 12 hours sometimes. And she she's not had an accident. She does just fine. Yeah. And uh, the point being that once we get to the neighborhood, we don't get out of our vehicles. I cover my windows, as does Lee. And uh, hopefully no one even knows that we're there other than seeing a vehicle parked there. Yeah. We've got to remember that if we have our windows covered, and uh, you know, windshields, side windows, whatever, back windows. We're thinking about the fact that, oh my gosh, does somebody know I'm in here? But if you have your, your windows covered and you watch your lighting, you're not playing loud music or anything else like that, nobody, nobody even thinks about it. Nomads in their car in my neighborhood, what? I think uh, maybe John and Janie have someone visiting them and that's who's parked on the street. We worry about this uh, and we worry way too much about it. To be I know quite it. Honest. It's like, well, it's a nighttime. And so the fear comes out because as children, there was a monster in our closet, right? <laughs> or under the bed. It, um, it, I think it's just a human thing. The lights go down and fear comes out and because we're nomads we're fearing that the boogeyman's going to be out there <laughs> and he's going to knock on our uh, yeah you bet. i mean that that noise and i i've heard it what three times now yeah. and that's yeah. all and we got some comments that said they they've been nomads for 10 years and they've only had knocks twice seriously you're not going to get the knock all the time and like i said in the last video 
experiment with it. Have fun with it. You're not going to die. <laughs> Even if you get the nug, you won't die. I promise you won't die. You'll mm. just, um, if you have to move, you'll move. Yeah. Yeah. And it's usually going to be a security guard. Right. And they're nice anyways. I mean, they don't, you know, they're not going to put their lives on the line, you know, because they don't know. We have a weapon. They don't know. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, we could be bad guys. So, yeah. So as far as the pet goes, yeah, we have addressed that. We've addressed um, where and shown you where to bark. Well, and one thing I'd like to comment on, because if any of you have seen a photo, a video, <clears throat> have visited with me, camped with me, you know that I have a, uh, my two back doors of my van are absolutely loaded with travel stickers, I'll call them, most of them. Yeah. I do have a sticker from a certain uh, young lady that, uh, a couple of them as a matter of fact, but anyway, not mentioning any names, <laughs> but most of them are travel <laughs> stickers. I mean, you look at that and you think, wow, this guy's a traveler. Well, <laughs> the, you might think Paul's not being very stealthy. In my humble <clears throat> opinion, <clears throat> what makes us stealthy is not seeing anyone in the vehicle, running around the vehicle, getting in and out of the vehicle, making a lot of noise or light yes. or whatever <clears throat> in the vehicle. That's what stealthiness is all about. Right. It's not having <clears throat> a, a, what should we call it? Let's see. Uh, uh, well, as a matter of fact, Lee, you have a burgundy minivan now. You yeah. used to have a gray one. I think the gray one was much more stealthy than your burgundy one that really stands out. Right. No, 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 no. Oh, she, wrong. She, <laughs> she is just... Don't she, mind me. Yeah. She knows how to, how to be in there. No one knows she's in there. I know. That's what stealthiness is right. all about, in my humble opinion. Right. Anyway. Well, you know, I did, when you said that we never left our vehicles or once we parked, you know, we were in California. Oh, my gosh. We would we would sit out with Abby. Well, we'd we go did. back, yeah. and then we I'd hop in here, and we would uh, sometimes we'd do videos, and because so many of you said, "Oh, you can't do it in California," well, not where we were. Everybody was. Yeah. We were all fighting for. <laughs> we were trying yeah. to get there first so we could get the spots in the neighborhood. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. I think it it does make a difference. Remember, we were in California in the summertime. The summertime, right. it can be light outside until 9.30, 10, 10.30 at night. Yeah. And whereas now, 6, 6.30, and it's pitch black out here. Well, we were in beach towns, too. Right. So that may make a, make a difference because you knew. I mean, I actually, before, um, be when I was solo, before you came out, I was fighting for the spot with this other. He had a program, <laughs> too, and I thought... I'm going to get there earlier than you because this is my spot <laughs> in front of a house. And we we fought for it. We really did. And finally I said, oh, fooey. Yeah. I'm going to go find another one. It was easy. Um, yeah, it was easy to find another one that wasn't as crowded. That's true. So it's it's um, it's um it really depends on where you are. It really does. And I'll bet even when we park in neighborhoods, even if I hopped out and came over and talked to you for a while, I bet nobody would even think twice about it. It might even be better if they could see that we're just normal people. Well, that's true. Yeah, because yeah. they're so scared. It's like, ooh, who's in there? Yeah. 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 Well, I hope this helped you out again. There is no reason to fear the night parking. Ooh, you know? I would just like to encourage everyone. Yeah. Uh, just give it a try and when you like I mentioned in I made a comment on that video that said the first time I followed Lee's vehicle into a neighborhood and parked right behind her and then I got the windows covered and everything and I'm going hope this is gonna be all right <laughs> but then I woke up the next morning yeah and lo and behold there was no knock there was no problem yeah. there was nobody saying what are you doing in there and we went on our way and yeah. piece of you cake. were good to go absolutely yes you were good to go you yeah. knew that that was a spot that you could come back to right yeah yeah so and it felt pretty good because as i said in my well, comment yeah. 
you can't beat the price <laughs> for parking there right. you know uh, so even if you're at a campground or whatever you know it, it's it's nice free is good oh yeah I'll say yeah that. So. Now we did include in our travels. We did include a hotel, and we, um, and I'll let you see this video when we looked at hotels. Motel? Is this a hotel or a motel, Paul? I, I would call it a motel. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's got some covered parking here. Yeah. Kind of so, nice. what do you think about parking in a motel? <clears throat> I have seen some motels that have signs. Now, what is what is this sign? Say? Um. Oh, that's special member parking. parking. Oh, yeah. special privileges. Uh huh. Huh. Okay. Well, all of their parking places are covered with solar panels, huh? Um, the special one says for special. if I would pick this particular one only because it looks like it's not a, a big place and I think you would stick out if so you would have to park like up here I don't think I would pick this one particularly I think well let's go see if this might be one that you might pick personally I've never I don't do it I don't park in a, in a hotel or a motel. I don't know that I ever had e have either. But look at them way back in there. Look at those spots uh, back there. Yeah. If I was going to, I'd probably park way back there. Maybe. Well, how about you? Would you rather be with the with the um, crowd? You think it'd be better? No, I think I would rather be back here. Okay, me too. Because at night, I don't think a lot of the motel people would come back here. They'd be too scared. <laughs> I do think that now nowadays, I bet they'd be too nervous to do it. And they would just leave them alone. Unless they saw them day after day after day, right? Right. Okay. Now let me ask you this. Okay. This sign says, the no parking ends here. But. And you can, every night I see yes. people lined up right here. Right not here. on the dirt, but right on the curb. Exactly. And we had a party here, you know. With <laughs> That's a right. Few, a few beer bottles there. So, hotels, motels, just drive around and see what you like. You know, get a feel of it. Use your instincts. And then it says... No parking here at a corner. So right. So to me, from, that means between this side and the mm -hmm. one back there, mm -hmm. parking is just fine. And you know why I bet they did that? Why did they do that? I bet because there's so many um, semis that need to park here. Well, that's true. Yeah, because yeah. I tend this right next to us. So, yeah, this is for basically for semis, I bet doesn't say that though so no I wouldn't hesitate a minute to park there okay here's Walmart I'm gonna guess that most Walmarts don't want you to park in their parking lot, but they don't stop you from doing it. We have signs down here, so I want to yes. let you get a picture of that because this, yeah. this is pretty clear. They're making it quite clear. It is pretty clear. Yes. I would not attempt to park here. Not at this Walmart. No. But... I would go in and ask anyways, or call them and ask anyways. Good point. Because I've had too many people say that they called and they asked even though the signs were up mm -hmm. and they were allowed, they just told them where to go. I also want to include, what about Denny's and IHOP? 
Well, you're open 24 hours. That's a good point. You know, that never occurred to me. I have never spent an overnight at a Denny's or an IHOP or any 24 hour uh, uh, type of establishment. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Why not? Well, you had mentioned that maybe their policemen would stop there to have coffee or whatever, but I'm not, uh, do they really still do that? Oh, I think so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, they stop in and maybe, and the, and the um, people working there, employees probably appreciate it. I would think so, sure. Yeah. 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 Right. And then we saw the Walmarts, and there were definite signs in one of the Walmarts that we visited. There, every Walmart's different. Yeah. The the Walmart that we were at um, to show you was absolutely no. But I don't know if people really parked there or not. But the one that we found way on the east side of town that we went to said no overnight extended parking. And there were usually every every night that we'd been there, maybe like, what, a dozen yeah, RVs? Not, yeah. Kind of surprising. I mean, I've seen more than a dozen vehicles. Yeah at a uh, Cracker Barrel, mm-hmm. and, and here's this huge and, right. parking lot at a, at a Walmart yes. that says no extended parking or right. overnight parking, which is, right. I, I'm sure, they're wary of, uh, they've got the signs up, and if they see somebody who's, uh, you know, doing the brake job and leaving some trash around and mm-hmm. doing things that uh, really aren't nice for a, a establishment they're not going to like what they see and neither is their customers okay. but yeah i don't want you guys being afraid anymore no 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 get all rid, rid of the fear just um, do it there's no monsters in the closet <laughs> and they're not under the bed either well, yeah yeah okay well hope you enjoyed this and we really do want to help you all it's once you get going with it and we had comments from people that have been doing this for years and they said after the first month or so, you get over it. Yeah. So don't be afraid. Nothing Come into the it. city and hang out. I mean, it's cool in here. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>